John Bo, fellow adventurers, Mike Dooley, time for a spiritual tune-up. So glad to be with you on this Monday. Thank you so much for the questions you post below on Facebook and Instagram. They are my talking points, Monday through Friday, 9.15 Eastern Time. Today's question, Mike, please explain channeling. Now, this is a hot topic of late because, as you likely know, I'm doing a program, a workshop with Sarah Landon from sarahlandon.com where she's actually channeling the council. This profound wisdom is pouring through. Uh, I'll tell you more about that at the end of this broadcast. But what is channeling? It is the most natural thing. You know who's really good at it? You are. It is spirit moving through, consciousness moving through the physical apparatus called a human body or animal body. You know, animals... Uh, channel their own spirits. Everything is being channeled all the time. This conversation is pure channeled work. It is not the brain that formulates words. It is not the tongue that creates syllables. Well, in a kind of a way it does. But what is going on is my essence, my unique personality, the consciousness, otherwise known as Michael Dooley, has this gift of a body. We are so much more than our body. We exist prior to the body arrival and beyond its demise. And so the body is here to create this conduit for my essence, my personality, my spirit, my consciousness to pour through. And we learn to get better and better at this our entire life long. Not only do we speak our essence, but we dance our essence. We craft our essence. Anything and everything that's done. We just finished watching the Olympics in Tokyo on TV, right? And on the internet. These brilliant athletes are able to channel their essence in concert with their physical body through lots of experience and practice. The practice is the word I was looking for. And they're able to do what seems to be superhuman achievements. They're showing us what we're all capable of doing with a belief in our ability. And they've cultivated this belief by practicing. The practice is not as important as the belief, but it gives us license to believe. Back to channeling as the questioner uh, was asking. What we're all capable of doing, some uh, it's more effortless than others, um, is to either set aside the beliefs in our personality, transcend the illusions, and actually allow our own higher self through. This is what enlightenment is. This is what the mystics and the yogis in the Far East and some wise folks in the West are pursuing. A transcendence of the illusions by dispelling the personality fleetingly, not permanently, can't really do it permanently, uh, but dispelling the personality and the beliefs that give it rise, and they can allow much more of divine intelligence and awareness, their higher selves, if you prefer, to come pouring through in conversation or in performance, physical performance. Uh, this is what a Jesus Christ or a Buddha was able to achieve. The transcendence of their personality, the transcendence of their beliefs, so that they could be all of their magnificent self. All of us are capable of doing this. An intermediary step prior to full-blown self-realization, Jesus or Buddha style, would be a sidestepping of personalities. Like, you cute little thing, you just go over here and all your beliefs can stay intact and you just go over there. Let's suspend those beliefs so that either your higher self can come through or whatever you intend. There, there's literally people, uh, I've seen it, uh, heard it, read it, resonate with it, who bring forth deceased loved ones, uh, bring forth messages from angels. Angels are real. They have something to say. Uh, animals, dolphin consciousness, uh, Christ consciousness, Jesus himself, uh, to say he is a bit... Uh, taking them down a few notches, but the beauty and essence of the Christ consciousness uh, that was channeled by Jesus is available to all. 
the same thing for for all prior prophets, deities, disincarnate beings, beings who have never experienced time and space. They have a consciousness and with intention, will and space. I'll give you the three um, uh, guidelines on how to visualize uh, the lightweight version in, in the end of this program. Um, trees, you can feel and read the energy of trees, plants, bushes, a blade of grass, uh, a spider, a, a mouse. Now, they're not going to start talking like you talk. When we channel, because it is our consciousness that is summoning, intending, and allowing um, a Seth or an Abraham or the council to come through, we are the filters of that consciousness. They must use our language. So if we speak Japanese, Swahili, and English, then this disincarnate being or, or whoever we're channeling will speak the same languages because it's our words, our consciousness that will dress up the message that they wish to impart. So always the channel, the, the vessel, the vehicle will filter the, the essence of what's being drawn through. Um, and so they'll speak with a little bit of your intonation, sometimes with an accent. Um, they'll speak using your vocabulary. They'll speak using your expressions. Some people who go into channel completely black out and have no idea of what just happened, like Jane Roberts in the Seth material, uh, like Edgar Casey, America's Sleeping Prophet. You can Google him. When they wake up, they're like, wow, I was gone. What happened? What did I say? What did I do? Uh, other people like Sarah Landon with a, uh, and my friend Tracy Farquhar, they can just do a few breathing exercises and literally be present, but kind of in the background as this essence, this energy pours forth. I will tell you in my life's experience, I have seen a few folks channel and I've seen it done on Ouija boards. Those work um, where really foul, ugly information came forward. I remember my, no, I won't go into details. <laughs> But you can tell right away, like, oh, this is not very, this is not very high energy. This is not good. Um, no one's ever vulnerable to being possessed. No one's vulnerable to somebody taking over their physical apparatus. You have to want it, desire it, and create the space for it. But just because you might start channeling doesn't mean it's always profound wisdom. It could be a bunch of garbage. And you have to be the judge of it. Now, you can guard to have the higher wisdom come come through. It's just the intention of higher wisdom with love and with blessings, the highest and the best for all, a few affirmations like that. It's said by many to imagine yourself shrouded in purple, gold, pink, and white light. I, I think I'm, I've added a color. Purple, pink, and white? I don't know. But many schools of thought teach imagining color or the tones of color or golden light for healing or faster manifestations. And in this case, um, for protection from um, unsettled spirits, but no one's vulnerable. You don't have to worry about, oh man, I might get something really awful. <clears throat> when I used to mess around with Ouija boards with my mom and brother and sister at times, sorry, I'm calling you guys out. Um, we sometimes got some really garbage stuff, uh, just, you know, vile, like uh, uh, literally words like hate and kill would come through. But far and away, 99% of my experience witnessing, reading, uh, knowing of channeled work, it is uh, the most beautiful and most empowering uh, information I've ever heard. And if something's coming through and you don't know how to judge it, then leave it. Leave it. You have that power. You always have that power. You choose what to think about. You choose what to focus on. But when your intention is well placed in the beginning with love and light, you automatically exclude any base energies coming through. And we didn't know well enough uh, back then, 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago, when we got some of that really crass crap a um, couple of ideas here for you. My steps 
to channel. Um, this is just deductive reasoning. I can see, I know how the mechanics of all manifestations work. It wouldn't be any different from channeling. No, I don't necessarily channel at all like Sarah Landon or Esther or Jane Roberts or J.C. Knight. But, but as I said at the outset, we all channel nonstop. And when I write notes from the universe or in the creation of my courses and other books, um, there is absolutely uh, endless examples of times where I sat with intention, knowing the tone and the vibration of what I wanted to impart, the humor, the wisdom, and I would be utterly astounded by what I was able to summon forth. And I can do that in a journaling session when it comes to health or healing or other questions I have about the nature of reality. You can do this right now with your own journal or in contemplative thought. I encourage you to do it. So here are the three steps. Intention. Get clear on what you want, what kind of information you want. Shroud it in golden, purple, white lights, okay? Um, ask for the highest and the best, the most loving energy available to, to be available to you. Um, you can channel, by the way, by speaking. You can channel when you're in a complete trance, as I said. You can channel through automatic writing when the words just come forward and you, you know what's going on. Or you can channel just by picking it up in thought and suddenly when there was no idea or truth or clarity or answer, you've got all of that. This is you channeling as you've been doing your entire life. So intention, belief that it's possible. It doesn't take much these days when you see how many people are doing it and there's so many great books out there. Um, believe that it's possible. Believe that you're capable of it. Do you believe? You probably do. So don't beat yourself up over that, okay? Belief is a pretty easy thing to get in line with. Okay, intention, belief, and create the space. You know, if you intend to do it one day and you believe that it's possible, but you never sit down and create that space. You never sit down with a journal or you never sit down in deep thought. You never sit down and ask a question and expect an answer. You know, you have to prepare the way. You have to demonstrate physically, get in congruence. Here I am in a place of receivership. Bring it on. And sit there for a minute or five or 35 or 45 minutes. Hey, in the beginning, like all things, it takes practice and you get better and better and better at it. So channeling is very real. It's very special. It's very awesome. If you'd like to know more, and actually, if you'd like some hand-holding from a pro, Sarah Landon and I are kicking off a four-part The Art of Channeling workshop tomorrow. Tomorrow is it. Join us by tomorrow or you can't join us. Uh, we're going to do four broadcasts. Tomorrow's Tuesday. The next Tuesday, the next Tuesday, four Tuesdays in a row for 90 minutes, 3 p.m. New York City time. If you miss a live broadcast but you've signed up, you have access to the recordings of it indefinitely at the tut.com dashboard. Life. For life, you have record the recordings and access to it. Share it. Watch it again. Watch it again. Watch it again. There'll be an audio uh, download if you prefer to listen to these things uh, with your eyes closed, uh, meditating, or maybe going for a walk. Um, and we kick off tomorrow. The Art of Channeling, An Adventure into Higher Wisdom. That's the name of the workshop. At a price you choose. So I think the low end is 59, the high end is 129. Uh, whatever fits your budget. It's a course uh, that is so much more valuable than, than money could say. It's a course that Sarah and others have taught one-on-one -on -one private sessions for thousands of dollars. So this is uh, priced for inclusivity for 90-minute sessions where you will be trained on techniques that will help you become your own channel, your own have your own access to profound wisdom, unleash creativity. Like I said, these, these athletes channel their highest and best. Uh, look at the masterpieces, look at the songs, look at, look at the novels, look at the movies, The Matrix. Look at uh, you know Leonardo da Vinci, all of their works. All of it's channeled, 100%. Not only are we all channeling all the time, but those of us who have the ability to step aside 
a little bit more can bring through their highest and best creativity. The list of benefits and perks uh, for channeling, enriching your life is endless. Become a better meditator. Um, become aware of your multidimensional existence. Uh, use it as an access point to, uh, you name it, you can do it. Health, healing, uh, all good things. Visualization, okay? So fellow adventurers, I hope you click the link below in this Facebook, Instagram video and join Sarah and I, money back guarantee. If you're like, oh, this is a bunch of hocus pocus baloney, then we don't want your money. Just ask for a full refund, you'll get a full refund. You have nothing to lose and so much to gain. All right, the art of channeling, it's yours. You're black belt judo PhD, you can do this. Thanks for the great questions, please ask them below. Before you leave today, ask a question below on Facebook and or Instagram. I may be answering it tomorrow. Thanks everybody. Hasta la pronto, te amo.